Hello everyone. Today I will explain how to calculate absolute bioavailability from NCA parameters with peak analytics. Let's first understand what bioavailability is. The bioavailability is a percentage of the administered drug amount that reaches the systemic circulation. If you give the drug intravenously, the bioavailability is 100% as you inject the totality of the drug directly in the systemic circulation. But if the drug is given orally, subcutaneously, or by any other extravascular route, part of it will be lost before reaching the bloodstream. For instance, for an oral dose, the drug needs to cross the intestinal wall and go through the liver before reaching the systemic circulation. Only a fraction of the dose will remain after these steps. If you have only extravascular data, it is not possible to calculate the absolute bioavailability because it is not possible to identify both the absorption percentage and the volume in which it is absorbed. In other words, the concentration observed in the blood would be the same for a large fraction of the dose absorbed and a large volume of distribution, or, on the other hand, for a small fraction absorbed and a small volume of distribution. However, if you have PK data for both extravascular and intravenous doses, it is possible to calculate the absolute bioavailability by comparing the total exposure in both cases. In the following example, I will use an oral dose, but the same idea applies for other extravascular routes. The typical formula to calculate the bioavailability is F equals AUC to infinity for the oral dose divided by AUC to the infinity for the intravenous dose where AUC to infinity represents the total exposure. The AUC to infinity is proportional to the amount of drug that reaches the systemic circulation up to a constant beta we don't know. By using the ratio, the unknown constant cancels out. For the IV, the amount that reaches the circulation is equal to the amount of the administered dose. If the dose amount is the same for IV and oral, I get, at the end, the fraction of the dose amount that reaches the circulation compared to the amount administered, which is what I'm looking for. This formula works if I use the same administered dose for the oral and IV route. If not, I can adapt the formula by normalizing by the dose amount for both routes. Reusing the line above, we obtain this, the denominator cancels out and I obtain the same as above. So this is the general formula to calculate the bioavailability using dose as a more common notation for the dose amount. To show you how to calculate the bioavailability in peak analytics, we will distinguish two cases. In the first case, each individual has received only one of the two formulations in a parallel design. In that case, we can calculate only an average bioavailability by doing the ratio of the average AUC to infinity for oral over the average AUC to infinity for IV. To do this, we will use a bioequivalence module, which will give us the ratio and also a confident interval. In the second case, each individual has received both oral and IV formulations in a design with several periods so a crossover design. Then the bioavailability can be calculated for each individual using the ratio module. In addition, we can also calculate an average bioavailability and the confidence interval using the BE module as in the first case. Let's first take a look at case one. I have loaded a peak and next project from the demos where half of the individuals have received an oral dose and half an intravenous dose. In the data set, I need to make sure that I have a column to distinguish the two routes that I have tagged as a categorical covariant. I also have an administration ID column that is specific to the dose lines to distinguish the two types of doses. IV individuals have received 100 mg, while individuals with oral dose have received 200 mg. As the dose amounts are not the same for oral and IV, I will use the dose normalized AUC to infinity to calculate F. In the NCA settings, I set intravenous for administration ID 1 and extravascular for administration ID 2 
according to the administration ID definition of my dataset. This will impact the formula used for some of the NTA parameters. Next, in the list of parameters, I select AUC inf D ops, as I will use the bioequivalence module to calculate the bioavailability. I also tick it in the BE column. By default, log transform is applied, which means that I will calculate the average for each root as a geometric mean rather than as an arithmetic mean. If I scroll down to the BE module, I can see that the design is automatically recognized as being parallel. The ratio will be calculated using the categorical covariate indicated on the line formulation. So this is where I should select the route column. The reference is set to IV to have it appear in the denominator. Before I run, I can check the calculation of the lambda z as it is used to extrapolate the AUC to infinity. Then I can click on run, making sure that both calculation tasks are selected. In the results, I can find the calculated bioavailability in the confidence intervals tab. It is the ratio here, shown as a percentage, with a confidence interval. So this was how to calculate the bioavailability in case of a parallel design. Now let's see how to do the second example, which is a crossover design with several periods. You can have one or several sequences, it does not matter. What is important is to have several periods for each individual, one with the IV formulation and one with the extravascular formulation. In this second project I have loaded, each individual has three periods, one IV, one intramuscular, IM, and one oral, PO. In the plot showing the observed data split by ID, I can see that each individual has three profiles. In the data tab, I have as before a column route tagged as categorical covariate, a column administration ID. In addition, I need to make sure that the period column is tagged as occasion, such that PCANX will detect each period as a separate profile to analyze. The order in which the three formulations have been administered varies from individual to individual, and this is recorded in the sequence column tagged as categorical covariate. In the NCA settings, I have set the administration type, and I will use the dose normalized AUC again. As before, I can use the BE module to calculate an average bioavailability and the confidence interval. This time, in the bioequivalence module, I can also include period and sequence as factors in the linear model to account for any effect that they may have on exposure. In addition to the average bioavailability, I also would like to calculate the bioavailability for each individual as the ratio of the individual AUC to infinity of intramuscular versus IV and oral versus IV. To do this, I will use the ratio section, which is available only in case of occasions. In the pop-up window, I can define a name, for instance, FEM, the variable for which the ratio is defined, here route, then the reference appearing in the denominator, so IV, and the test, here intramuscular. I will do the ratio using the AUC to infinity divided by the dose parameter. The exact formula which will be applied is shown at the bottom. This is the setup for the intramuscular route compared to IV, and I can also do the same for the oral route with the exact same setup except having PO here. If I run, I see in the results BE tab the average bioavailability as a percentage calculated using the linear model as well as the confidence interval. In addition, in the NCA ratio tab, I see the bioavailability for each formulation and each individual as a ratio between 0 and 1. If for some individuals the AUC to infinity could not be calculated or I don't have a profile, it's going to appear as none. In the ratio summary tab, I can see the descriptive statistics of the two ratios over all individuals. Note that in the current 2024 version of PCANALYX, it is not possible to stratify the ratio summary table. 
Also note that the geometric mean value here can differ from the value in the BE tab because here it is a geometric mean of the individual ratios, while here it is the ratio of the geometric means. In addition, here the values are corrected for possible period and sequence effects. So as a short recap, to calculate individual bioavailabilities when you have both IV and extravascular doses for each individual, use the ratio section. To calculate an average bioavailability, in particular for parallel designs but also crossover design, you can use the bioequivalence module. Have a nice week!